Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you. And some of you may have been noticing I've been putting um, a few polls which will continue throughout the week as well some fun polls as well as educational ones and I'll give you some answers uh, to uh, some of the polls that I've been uh, posting and one of them that um, I thought was really interesting in fact um, uh, recently among the many polls that I've been uh, posting was uh, was this one and I've wanted to get, again give the answer to this whereas uh, some of the other polls are a bit more subjective and uh, for example for some people it's like what's the least uh, what is the least important aspect of forex trading quite interesting um, that 39% uh, of people um, uh, the votes uh, as she said a uh, fundamental analysis is the least important aspect for them of course it's subject it is subjective it's for you not necessarily uh, for, for everyone but uh, interesting uh, trading psychology 25% that is a that is a shocker for me because for uh, you know the least important for me if you haven't got trading psychology then how do you do how can you really trade the other two you know what I mean so 25% of people actually think that um that uh that is the least important anyways um again that is subjective and if that's what you think brilliant but what isn't subjective is this question here which is the more devalued um a currency is the higher inflation goes typically i'm going to get into the weekly um the weekly analysis but i just wanted to go over this because there's no point in me going over the weekly analysis analysis right or you watching it if you don't really truly understand um you know the lingo and, and really the relationship between things like uh, interest rates inflation gdp etc and what it really means so quickly the more the, the poll i put up 101 votes so far one day ago was the more devalued the currency is the higher the inflation goes typically and um 81 percent did uh eight, um said true and 19% said false. And on this one, I'm happy to say that 81% is correct. And here's the reason why for the 19%, um, if you want to basically just actually have a look, right, is inflation. I know a lot of people get confused about what inflation actually means, right? So inflation is, is prices as well as value. But inflation the higher inflation goes yeah is the more devalued the currency is yeah so when a currency or when a currency devalues for example it gets weaker and weaker and depreciates yeah the high, the effect of that is higher inflation right so this here's an example here we've got the US dollar right so from April last year 2020 um, it was pretty much dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against um, uh, major other currencies, other major currencies like the, uh, the euro, the yen, the pound, for example, we saw that um, uh, the dollar was uh, depreciating, right? Going down, yeah? But what did we see uh, with what happened to inflation, right? Inflation, which is basically devaluation, the higher inflation goes, yeah, or the higher the inflation reading, yeah, what it's telling you is that the currency is getting more and more devalued. So you can see the correlation, right? Yeah, um, you see uh, inflation go higher and higher. So from last year, April, July, etc., etc., started going higher and higher. There's no, you know, there's no, um, th th there's the correlation, right? So you're seeing weaker dollar, depreciated dollar, devalued dollar, and the result of that is actually higher inflation. So the more devalued the currency goes, the higher inflation goes. There we go. True. So uh, well done to those of you who did get that correct. And for those who didn't, don't worry. It's a learning curve. Be, there's also going to be plenty more questions coming up to test your fundamental analysis. And uh, my opinion is how can you really call yourself a Forex trader if you don't understand the fundamentals and what really drives um, currency prices and valuations? Anyways, uh, if you do want to learn more on the fundamental analysis as well, I have tons of videos hours and hours and hours of videos I've got a, a actual playlist um a forex playlist forex fundamental playlist as well but this is really the video that you should probably start off with which is the forex fundamental analysis trading course beginner and intermediate traders and i really go into depth as to the reasons why as well so uh with that being said let's get into the weekly 
uh, the week ahead. Fundamentally, so the US earnings season kicks off. Um, several large US banks will report their second quarter results. Investors will also keep an eye on Fed chairs. So we always want to keep an eye on any kind of central bank um, um, uh, uh, statements and reports because uh, the, the central banks are the ones that are trying to um, um, uh, dictate and control, I guess, the, the valuation of their currency uh, to help support the, the economy, right? So Fed Chair Powell uh, semi-annual report to Congress on the data front, consumer and producer, pr um, producer inflation, retail sales and industrial production will provide an update on the economic recovery. Elsewhere, China GDP growth for second quarter, that's going to be important. Uh, and I'll explain that a bit later uh, as you get into the technicals and fundamentals. UK CPI and jobless numbers and the Bank of Japan interest rate decision will also be in the spotlight. So um, some uh, some decent um, news potentially for some market um, some market moves, even though we are in the uh, summer period. And uh, typically we do have low volatility, even though we didn't see it this week. We did see some risk off uh, come into the market and I'll explain that a bit uh, later. Also as well, if you do want to take your trading to the next level and then really kind of um, accelerate your, your technical analysis by applying fundamental analysis, my um, uh, mentoring group, uh, fundamental and uh, supply and demand mentoring group closes in the next seven days. It closes on the 18th of July. So um, if you do are and are interested in um, in trying um, my way of trading, because most traders do uh, just do technical analysis, but if you do want to um, use the full suite of tools, so for example, understanding the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, what currency pairs we want to really trade and choosing the best currencies to trade with, 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 uh, and identifying whether a currency is going to trend or range or likely to trend or range using fundamental analysis, strength divergences, convergences, interest rates, etc. Right, And also as well, join the mentoring group, uh, which I do hold Zoom calls, live Zoom calls, as well as uh, mentor you guys. Um, then pretty much you have seven days to get involved in that. After that, I will be closed, um, I'm not saying for the rest of the year, maybe I might open up again, maybe in October. So I think that'd be the last time, if I do open up in October, would be the last time this year, as I like to keep the group small and focused. Um, I'm not one of those uh, um, people that is trying to get everybody in. No, 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 because it doesn't benefit me, it doesn't benefit you. What benefits uh, us both is if we get everybody everybody on the same page. So enrollment closes 18th of July. And once that closes, I may not open until maybe somewhere like October, November. So take the uh, the chance and the opportunity while you've got it. And uh, I look forward to working with you. By the way, as well, quickly, please, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is going to be a lot of hard work. This is not, there's no silver bullet involved here. There's going to be a lot of hard work. If you're not prepared to put in the hard work and understand uh, fundamental analysis along with technical analysis and trading psychology, then don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. Don't waste your money, right? Um, go with someone else, right? Who is selling you um, uh, a get rich quick um, and with, 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 uh, with no hard work uh, type of dream. Anyways, guys, let's get into the technical and the fundamentals in depth. And we start off on the Dow Jones dollar index or the dollar index. And um, we just use this as confluence, right? We use this as confluence um, and understanding where, you know, dollar strength and weakness. And what we've really had um, over the past couple of weeks is a hawkish uh, Federal Reserve, hawkish meaning that they're looking to raise interest rates. They want the currency to appreciate. Um, and the market is buying the rumor, selling the fact. Now, this week we did have some uh, bit of um, bit of volatility, and uh, the markets are reconsidering the reflation trade. So, markets have begun to reevaluate how much uh, difference the pandemic has actually made to the prospects for sustained growth in the global economy. Yeah. So, um, what tends to happen is is that there, there is demand for higher yielding currencies when there is uh, economic growth, right? So fears of rapidly rising inflation uh, that dominated uh, markets just a few weeks ago have been replaced by nervousness about growth. Now, inflation, again, is, um, is, is, is um, 
devaluation, which is basically a natural part and a normal part of actually currency. Central banks have a mandate to achieve a 2% inflation target. But where the nervousness is coming in is really about uh, the growth of the global economy. And I'll just read this next paragraph to give you um, an overall um, a synopsis of really what was uh, happening in the concerns and why prices were kind of um, a bit all over the place on the Thursday and the Friday. So investors have this week reconsidered the so-called reflation trade. And we've been, we, we, we in the group have been trading this reflation trade since um, last year, uh, October, November time, since the vaccine rollout started. Uh, some of the traders have done really well in the group uh, buying, um, uh, I guess, uh, currencies that have benefited from um, from um, uh, global growth, like, for example, the New Zealand dollar, the Australian dollar, um, the Canadian dollar, um, the pound as well. So the idea that robust economic recovery underpinned by uh, continuing easy money from the Federal Reserve and bumper fiscal stimulus would boost inflation and inevitably force the Fed to raise rates faster than it had signaled, right? So raising rates is always positive. A combination of production bottlenecks, the ongoing chip shortages holding back car manufacturing and the spread of more infectious Delta variant has now reduced the optimism over economic growth. Long-term US Treasury yields a reflection of inflation and uh, growth expectations have fallen as the bonds have sold off so again all roads lead to and i preach this over and over again inflation interest rates and gdp right gdp economic growth and inflation which then the central bank can um, uh, dictate monetary policy whether they're going to be hiking holding or cutting rates right so um, there are fears potentially going on in the market and that's what really happened this week which is the reason why you saw um, a lot of um, uh, potential sell-off and I think it was the Thursday and then Friday uh, the fears might have been actually a bit um, exaggerated um, but going forward I think the dollar may want to uh, I think it's probably still a buy against certain currencies, not necessarily against all currencies. But for me, I think the dollar is probably still a bit of a buy. It may start to pull back into that demand zone. And if we, if it does come down into that demand zone um, uh, and you want to be a buyer, then look for obviously buy trades against uh, dollar pairs like, for example, the dollar yen, dollar Swiss. Um, um, you could look towards the dollar CAD. I wouldn't probably look towards the dollar CAD, but as long as as well there is risk on involved, and the market really kind of still believes in the reflation trade. If there are really kind of global concerns and the data doesn't support the narrative, meaning that if the economy isn't growing, if China, for example, really uh, are starting to struggle, then you could see some risk off sentiment and in a risk off environment. Um, in fact, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc uh, will do uh, pretty well. Um, even though um, in, in, in some aspects they really shouldn't, but um, I do think that the uh, those, those those currencies will do well when it comes to the dollar though. Um, I'm still slightly more bullish on the dollar, not necessarily my favorite trade to take, but um, uh, there is uh, an opportunity here to still get long on the dollar as long as the data supports the narrative. If you do want to try for a short trades, so obviously you're looking for confluences within this supply zone and then going down to or going on to the other Forex pairs to look for a potential short trade as well. Uh, moving on to the dollar yen and dollar yen again, prices came down into this demand zone. Uh, in fact, it broke through these two demand zones and now I always say this as well there's no technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of fundamental right and risk sentiment analysis which is row row risk on risk off right row row this is what uh, 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 financial institutions and central banks really base their um, their buying and selling uh, bias on for the medium to long term and if there's risk off right in an environment uh, the japanese yen tends to do well there was risk off in 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 on on the wednesday and the thursday coming into the market and it had kind of been building actually a bit previously before that and this is what you saw a bit of a sell off but again fears there could be market overreaction and if you think the market has overreacted a little bit then this was an absolute nice buying opportunity in order to get involved in that if you missed this don't worry wait for proof something I, I talk about which is proof of value 
right? Meaning that you want the market to prove that there's demand there. And if prices ever come back to this zone here, then you want to get long. That's fine. It doesn't necessarily have to pick you. Know, you don't have to always pick the lows and the highs. You can wait for proof of value uh, to to occur, and then look for a potential buy if we do if prices do come down here and we're in a risk, for example, on environment. But prices did react off of this nice demand zone. This is really the origin. If we do higher highs, higher lows that move to the upside brilliant and then prices come back down to here and we see but if again risk off persists in the market and is worries you probably will start to see something like that happen um, we do have supply which is up here so again if prices do come up to this zone here and then we do get some sort of uh, again risk sentiment uh, changes to risk more risk off this is going to look like a very very good trade i do like this technically for a short trade if there is some risk off sentiment moving on to the dollar swiss and dollar swiss again very very similar to the dollar yen when it comes to um uh, risk sentiment so we've got recent supply i would probably drag that up there and uh if again if we're in more of a risk off environment then you will see prices start to sell off but I do think this is a this is a nice buying opportunity potentially again data has to support the narrative the dollar has to really start to um, prove that the Federal Reserve want to uh, hike rates and if uh, but if every time uh, maybe some data comes out and it's not great for the dollar then you will see prices start to come to the downside um, but this is an opportunity where um, if the data supports the narrative, this is a nice buying opportunity to the upside uh, at, the, at the lows of this demand zone. If not, then the next one is going to be here. Again, um, if you do think that risk off sentiment is coming into the market, then any kind of pullbacks into a supply zone will be uh, a really decent zone to look for any kind of short trades. But as well, you always have to ask yourself why the Swiss franc is a bargain against the, uh, the dollar. The Swiss franc and the Swiss National Bank are way behind the curve when it comes to hiking rates. So um, what I say to the guys in the group is that risk off, right? Risk off, yeah, can push prices to where we want to be buyers, right? Because once we go back into risk on mode again, this is going to, if prices do come down into this 89 uh, cent area, 90 cent area, this is going to look like an absolute bargain price for the dollar. Um, so uh, we could see uh, some, some decent upside potential in the second half of the year. Moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, the Canadian dollar is one of my uh, one of my buys. It's been one of my buys for, for, for pretty much over six months. And um, we did come up into the uh, this uh, short trade here, this supply zone. And um, we did some of the guys in the group um, saw this on the Friday where the Canadian uh, labor market bounces back strongly after lockdown. So the economy creates 230,000 jobs. Unemployment rate falls to 7.8. Report comes ahead of the expected Bank of Canada bond taper. So Canada jobs market roared back to life after, f um, to, uh, sorry, roared back to life faster than expected in June, reversing the bulk of employment losses from countrywide lockdowns earlier this year. The economy added 230,700 jobs um, uh, position last month. Statistic Canada said Friday in Ottawa versus economist expectations for an increase of 175,000. So pretty much, you know, really kind of beat expectations. For now, this is just the latest piece of evidence that the Canadian economy is rebounding from the third wave, leaving few, if any, obstacles to another taper. And taper is always positive because it's reducing the amount of support the Bank of Canada have to provide, um, which is positive for a currency. Um, um, Benjamin Reed says, um, Canada uh, rate strategist at BMO Capital Markets of Toronto wrote in a report the unemployment rate um, fell from 7.8 to 8, um, set, fell to 7.8 from 8.2. So that is really positive news for the Canadian dollar. So with that being said, um, you know, that it's, it's all about who's leading the global recovery. And uh, so I know there were some uh, traders in the group that got short in and around this area um, here. So um, hopefully, if you see a divergence between the dollar, maybe not so good news, or the Canadian dollar, the CAD, and maybe there's some a bit of uh, maybe some negative news against the dollar, then that's a nice divergence, and then you should see prices 
continue going to the downside. What we do have though is there is uh, some demand here potentially. So um, if you are in um, any kind of short trades, potentially taking profit in and around this area will be, or some profit anyway, may be, uh, may be prudent as well. But uh, if you do wanna get long, then this is gonna be the area, the one, two, three, fifty, or just below that. And the one, two, fours, and I'm gonna actually drag this up here, probably delete this, in fact, uh, no, in fact, I'm gonna do this. All right, here we go. Yeah, so that's where the supply zone is. And um, yeah, this was a nice trade. If, if prices do come back up to this zone here and you wanna get short, that would be um, decent as well. Looking at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and the New Zealand dollar, um, again, one of my uh, buys, currency that I'm looking to buy, not necessarily against the US dollar though, but we do have uh, some supply and demand in here. Um, we did react uh, this week, so we had this demand zone, which pr again, proof of value, prices came back down, prices all get all the way back up here. Um, there was lots of demand, and then we got a bit of a shift in risk sentiment this week, and then we've also now got um, prices potentially buying. So there is a bit of a range here between this high and this low. You can see it right there to there. So there's an agreed acceptance between buyers and sellers at the moment and where we are at fair value. I would probably say if I was looking for any kind of long trade and the guys know um, who are taking the course about stop hunts, I wanna see probably a stop hunt below that if I was looking to take that and then look for um, a long trade. But um, for me, if I'm looking to buy one of these two, it, it would be the New Zealand dollar in a risk on environment. In a risk off environment, the uh, the US dollar would be the one to buy. So you could see if risk off does come in, you could see prices start to still continue to the downside. But if you are looking to get long on the uh, US dollar, then I would probably say, probably looking at something like the top end of this demand zone sorry, this supply zone, I should say, top end of that, right, into this zone. Uh, so around this 71 round number before looking at short trades or just above that for a short trade, so the 71.50 area um, or between the 70, 0 0.7126 and the 0 0.716 area for, for short trades if you're looking to buy the US dollar. But right now I would probably, in the risk on environment, look for any kind of... Uh, um, uh, New Zealand dollar trades, but again, not against really the US dollar, not for me anyway. Moving on to the pound dollar and the pound benefiting um, uh, from again, a little bit of a dollar weakness. There, there are some several bank forecasts that are forecasting, you know, one, four, twos within the third quarter, which we also do look at. Um, we always have the confluence of bank forecasts uh, along with our fundamental analysis. And um, again, we did see prices react off of this demand zone here. From a UK perspective, fundamentally, we did have um, the UK economy records modest May growth despite reopening. So the UK GDP rebounded only slightly in May as falls in manufacturing, retail and construction helped to offset the reopening rebound in consumer services. Rising COVID-19 cases pose a challenge for the recovery over the summer, but the, the medium term story still looks fairly solid. So still looks fairly solid, even though there are challenges, challenges everywhere, really. It's not just the UK. It's all over the globe uh, with this Delta variant. One of the uh, paragraphs I wanted to highlight was, nevertheless, we still expect, and we, being in ING, um, expect uh, the UK to record approximately 5% growth through the second quarter, but the outlook for the current third quarter is becoming trickier to predict COVID-19 cases are rising, albeit the growth rate may finally be showing some tentatively uh, tentatively signs of slowing and while the link with hospitalizations has weakened with the vaccines there is growing concern about the number of people needing to self-isolate so there are concerns unfortunately and if this narrative of the um the covid uh, delta variant spreading and uh, and kind of um uh, hampering the uh, the uh, the growth then potentially um I think, uh, again, money is probably going to be flowing into safe haven currencies. So um, where we are, it's a bit of a difficult one with the British pound. Fundamentally, 
Um, and when we find ourselves in situations like this where you're not really too sure, um, the question, the, the answer really is not to trade the currency pair, right? We always want to trade currency pairs where it is clear what is going on. If it's not clear, meaning that you're not too sure whether you should be buying or selling a currency based off fundamental analysis, um, then just don't trade the pair, right? There's not, it's not every time, not every single pair you've got to trade and don't ever be married to a pair if the, if the fundamentals don't match, right? If the fundamentals aren't clear, but technically, if you are looking to be a buyer, then I would probably say looking for any kind of pullbacks into this deeper zone. It's one to be seven round number before looking at long trades, looking at short trades. I do like this. It's a nice uh, supply zone, fresh area of supply um, for a short trade. If you want to be a buyer of the dollar against the British pound, if you think the British pound is a bit weaker than the dollar, I think they're probably in a bit of the same boat at the moment. Um, moving on to the euro dollar, euro dollar. So the euro, um, uh, it's probably looking at a bit of a pullback technically. So I think we do have uh, hidden dumps, uh, sorry, supply there. New lower highs and lower lows. So let's zoom in. So we had lower high, low um, there, and then lower low there. So pull back into this zone actually is actually quite nice for a potential short if you believe that the dollar is going to get stronger. And um, I would still um, personally have my bias still if I'm trading any one of these it would be um, for a short on the euro dollar um, one of the uh, articles I have is um, ECB more cautious than the Fed on inflation overshoot in new target so um, one of the um, uh, analysts that we look at in Bloomberg as well um, from Carsten uh, Bretsky from ING um, uh, notices that the difference between the two central banks is important, right? So the difference that there's divergence, right? There's always when we're trading currencies, you have to know the difference between the two currencies that you're trading against the currency pair, yeah. Um, and the difference is what gives us our fundamental bias. If one is lagging behind the other, or one is leading the other, one is hiking rates, one is cutting rates, then you can understand there's there's a divergence there or, or a convergence, and that's what you are looking to trade. There's an opportunity, there's a value opportunity there. Yeah. So the difference between two central bank policies, I guess, is important, says Carsten Bretsky, an economist at ING in Frankfurt. You'll get more extreme monetary policy in the US. And while the changes to the inflation target implies that um, even longer period of loose policy for the ECB, officials also said that it'll pay great attention to the cost of owner occupied housing, which isn't um, which which currently isn't reflected in official inflation numbers. Bloomberg economists estimate that this could add about um, 0 0.1 to 0.2 percentage points to inflation, neutralizing the change. Sorry, to the wording. Now, um, the 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 European Central Bank are a bit more dovish, whereas you're seeing here that the um, um, the Fed um, inflation target at two percent is is way above that. Um, the uh, European Central Bank is slightly uh, below it, and what they're looking at is basically overshooting, meaning that they want the economy to be able to support any kind of interest rate hikes before they hike rates. So they need to see, in fact, they need to see the um, the economy, right, GDP start to um, improve before they start to uh, think about hiking rates. So again, the data has to support the narrative. It really does. So, um, so let's see what happens. But at the moment, I think the Federal Reserve are ahead of the European Central Bank. I say, I think, I know. And um, when it comes to potentially the hiking rates or the rumor anyway. So with that rumor, yeah, if that rumor is still persistent, yeah, and the European Central Bank are lagging, the path of least resistance, in my opinion, is to the uh, downside, sorry, um, to the downside. Again, it's not financial advice. So if you're thinking or you're considering the same thing, then your first opportunity to, for potential shorts this week would be at this 1860 um, uh, level between this uh, 18, uh, well, basically 19 round number and uh, 1.1863. And if that, if prices, you know, there is no basically demand for the uh, dollar there, then we look for any kind of short trades in and around this zone right here, which I think is actually quite a nice zone. Let me just add some 
little bit of confluence that we look at, which is support and resistance. You can really see that there is some support and resistance in and around this zone as well. That level has been traded. Let's just zoom out, yeah. That level definitely has been traded in the past. So I think this 119 zone would be really nice for a potential short if you're looking to short the euro dollar and you think the dollar is uh, is 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 would be a bargain up uh, up here against the uh, euro. If you are looking to buy the euro though, uh, there is a bit of demand here, not the strongest area of demand. Yeah, I'd probably wait for maybe lower end of. Uh, of here before or the 1750 1700s before looking at uh, any kind of long trades euro yen euro yen um euro yen has bounced off of this this demand zone here and again in a risk off environment the yen is really the one to buy could it be temporary possibly if it if it persists then you're probably going to see more downside so you're looking for potential uh, supply zones if you can get it so if prices do pull back up here and then you're starting to see confluences for risk off then that is going to be a really nice zone to the uh, to the short side any kind of long trades i'm not necessarily a buyer of the uh, euro not against the, swiss, um, the, the the yen more against the swiss franc I'm, I'm more keen on but if you are looking to get long then I would probably say that zone there, but the I think lower zone, the one to nine area, um, in this zone here would be probably a better buy potentially. Moving on to the Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar again reacted off of this really nice uh, demand zone, which had some support and resistance confluence. So uh, really nice technically there. But again, in a risk on environment, we should see prices go to the upside. The Australian dollar. Um, Monetary policy wise, is I think that the, the dollar, in fact, the US dollar is actually ahead of the Australian dollar. But um, there was rumors this week that the um, the uh, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia were slightly more hawkish. So let's see what happens uh, with this. And if they are, then pretty much you should see uh, uh, prices go to the upside. If the um, there is a bit of risk off sentiment then you probably will continue to see uh, the Australian dollar sell off because the Australian dollar really doesn't do well in a risk off environment uh, moving on to the Aussie yen uh, Aussie yen and this is again one of the pairs that I'm looking to or say looking to trade um, we've got a break through that large demand zone and for now I'm not going to put any kind of demand zone on this I will put some supply though we've got supply in and around there so risk off this week you know cause prices to uh, go to the downside as traders potentially were just coming out of the uh, Australian dollar not necessarily going into the yen but uh, maybe just taking profit on the Australian dollar um, but if they were going into the Japanese yen then this is basically what you're seeing um, for me though I'm long and what this does and what um, risk off does again is, is it basically pushes prices to where I want to be a buyer if prices do continue to go to the upside and it proves that there is value at this area proof that there was value here and this becomes more and more of a bargain as prices go to the upside I want to be a buyer overall right if prices come down to that demand zone that's where I'm looking to be a buyer um, if not then 81 level 80 uh, 93 to 80 64 areas where I'm looking for long trades personally again not financial advice if you are looking for any kind of short trades due to risk off then this area here really is the uh, first area to look for um, any kind of sell trades currently and finally we've got gold so gold um, again benefits from a risk from risk off sentiment and uh, gold we did have uh, gold poised for third weekly advance on recovery headwinds so gold headed for a third weekly advance as fears that coronavirus variants may endanger the economic recovery spurred investors demand for havens bullion is winning back investors after a bleak june helped by a sharp decline in treasury yields which burnished in uh, so burnished the appeal of the non-interest um 
uh, uh, bearing metal. So renewed virus fears around the world have taken the edge off the so-called reflation trade we spoke about earlier, causing global stocks to slump on Thursday. But on Friday, um, the, the, the uh, stocks were back to new highs. So um, let's see what happens there. So bullion held gains, even though US bond yields and equities rebounded on Friday. They sure did. The risk to the recovery were underscored this week by the Federal Reserve minutes that highlighted continued uncertainties. China's central bank cut the most, uh, the most, sorry, China's central bank cut the amount of cash most uh, banks hold in reserve, a move that went further than many economists expected and suggested growing concerns about global, about the, sorry, economic recoveries or the the economy's recovery. So again, there are fears, right? There are fears. It's, it's risk on and risk off isn't a light switch. It's varying degrees. And so um, there are fears there. So if the fears continue, you can expect, you know, really gold to start to probably drift a lot higher and especially if, um, if uh, like I said, if um, if there is uh, bad news for the uh, for the dollar, as the um, as the dollar a uh, weaker dollar and a depreciating dollar will support also support gold buying. Um, this needs to make a higher high before there is any kind of demand there. So what you would need to do is really wait for any kind of pullback into the seventeen seventy two level before looking at any kind of long trades. If you're looking for supply and looking for a short trade, really the only place is if prices come up here or if prices make new lows and then you're looking for a pullback into that supply zone there before looking at getting short. So um, this brings us to the end of the video. Hope you guys um, enjoyed it as well. Thank you to all of those who are participating in the um, in the actual polls as well. And uh, the latest poll at the moment is if a currency is headed towards deflation, what does this mean for the value of the currency? So 14 votes so far, I haven't refreshed this page, but um, well worth answering. And if you can understand this, you can understand really where central banks and what central banks are doing in certain environments, what other you know financial institutions are gonna be thinking and what they're gonna be buying and selling when it comes to uh, valuations of currencies. So I'll continue to ask these questions um, throughout the week, try and get your brains ticking. And um, yeah, if any, if you've got any suggestions, then uh, please let me know if it's good, I might include it in the uh, polls. Anyways, guys, take care, have a great week and speak to you soon.